Hey, Psychfall fans, welcome back. As you know, in our last previous video, we were talking about we've been digging into the dirt and the unconsciousness of Freud. And so we've been kind of talking about things that you might not have known in previous videos. Also, we've been talking about some of his more predominant theories that you may have heard. And so we're kind of delving into them, kind of talking about them, see what we know, what to be true and what not. And so in our last video, we talked a little bit about the old slip of the tongue, or as we put it, the Freudian slip. And so today, let's talk a little bit more and build on that and give some examples of more modern day examples of the most common ones that happen. So why don't you come with me today on Sigma de Freud. Oh, that was a slip of the tongue, wasn't it? I don't know. Why don't you join me today on Psych Thoughts? In his book, Ford's Theories and Its Uses of Literary and Cultural Studies, uh, a researcher by the name of Henry de Berg basically separated Freudian slips into the following categories. He said that they can fall into the categories of forgetness, forgetfulness linked to repression, uh, forgetfulness linked to desire, and spoken distortions. And so in his book, he kind of took all the things that Freud had previously presented and said these are the more common ones that we usually have. Let's talk a little bit about the forgetfulness link to regression. And Freudian slips are usually slips of memory rather than of the tongue. We kind of forget things or we kind of repress things and we don't want to talk about it. I'll give you a good example. According to the psychoanalytic theory, if you experience something that causes you a great fear, pain, or trauma, your mind might respond by pushing that thought away. All right, basically regressing it into your unconsciousness so that you just don't remember that event or something else. With that in mind, in his book, the professor basically found out that let's say that as a small child you were bitten by a dog, and the dog was had a fairly gentle nature about it, but that one day you kept poking and prodding and poking and prodding, and he really wasn't listening to it growl, and so the dog finally got mad and bit you. And the bite was pretty traumatic, and you had to have stitches. Now, the thing is, is that the dog was named Nordingham, okay? So, after that, you don't think anything about it. You grow up and you go to work. And when you go to work, you have a co-worker to join your team by the name of Carl Nordingham. And believe it or not, and as much as it embarrasses you, you can never really remember Carl's last name. You're like, Carl, I, what is his last name? I just can't remember. According to Freud and the professor that wrote the book, that this is kind of like a lapse in memory because the Nordingham reminds you of that tragedy, that event that happened that you don't want to experience. And so even though you can't remember the person's last name, it's because that, that brings up that memory and so you keep that repressed. He also said that a lot of the other ones also fall into the territories of forgetfulness linked to desire. Okay, And this is another type of memory slip that can happen when you do or you don't do uh, you do or you don't want to get someone's attention or you're drawn to them, okay? So it's kind of like you really don't want to do stuff. Have you ever had that lengthy to-do list, maybe that honey list out there that you should be working on, but then for some reason you always forget to do it or you mislay it somewhere uh, and you continue to lose that list because you don't have that desire to do it. Now, another example that he used in his book is that maybe one day you're in class and you're in lecture and you notice that there's a student in class that's very attractive and you're like, ooh, I'd like to get to know them. And then so after class, the, you talk to them and you tell them that you need a ride to your apartment and they go, yeah, and so you're riding together and you're having a great conversation. You're finding out they've got a lot of things in common. Stuff is going great. And then you tell them, hey, uh, give me a call sometime. We'll do something. And they go, okay. So you get out of their car and they drive away. As they drive away, you realize, I'm going to put their phone number in my phone, and you start feeling around, and you don't have your phone on you. And then you realize that you dropped your phone, or it must have fell out in their car. So you go back and get your student directory, and you look up the person's number, and you call them, and you go, hey, I don't mean to bother you and sound creepy, but I accidentally dropped my phone in your car. And they go, oh yeah, here it is. Now, according to most people, and even into Freud, they'd say, well, your desires for this other person that caused you to subconsciously drop your phone so you could make up another conversation or find another way to talk to this person. Uh, and so that you do that. Maybe 
you just actually weren't thinking, you know, I'm going to leave my so phone here. Before we go, that's what you were thinking in your subconscious, and that's how you reason to give you the chance to uh, talk to them so you conveniently forgot that was going on. The last one is what we would call or deem spoken distortions, okay? And this is when most people think of when they hear about Freudian slips. You know, you kind of say the wrong things or you substitute words in that you don't want to do or slip-ups in your speaking and you don't, it doesn't really make any sense. Remember the example I gave earlier about the worker by the name of Carl Nottingham. Uh, perhaps instead of just simply forgetting the person's name, you're constantly using the wrong name. Maybe you substitute Twittingham, or maybe you say Birmingham, or you maybe say Nortonham. You know, you say all these different things, and at some point you become the... You have this inability to remember the person's last name because you keep getting it wrong, and it becomes a running joke at the office that you can never get anybody's name right. <clears throat> this doesn't happen intentionally. Your brain is just simply attempting to find a compromise between your conscious and your unconscious thoughts. Uh, so instead of just going, uh, Carl, I don't know your last name, your brain goes, well, I think it's something like Birmingham. Yes, Carl Birmingham. And you're like, no, that's not it. As always, when we talk about Freud, when we talk about the unconsciousness, it always brings up a lot of weird ideals that people have. And Freud had quite a bit. Now, uh, have you ever had a strange, uh, have you ever had any one of these type of three Freudian slips of the thoughts? Hmm, maybe I have, but I can't remember. As always, psychology is everywhere, and it is fun, and it is wonderful. And I hope to see you soon. If you like these videos, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, uh, because we're always posting unique facts about psychology and different things on this channel. Um... So until then, I was going to say something else, but I forgot what I was going to say. I wonder if that would count as a slip. Hmm. Until then, I'll see you. Bye.